We're going to talk about uh, internet and the communities on the internet. Just a couple of numbers to get us started off. You have 2 billion internet users worldwide, 152 million blogs worldwide, 850 million Facebook users, 25 billion tweets in the last 12 months, 19 p million people following Lady Gaga on Twitter, and you have 130 million photos uploaded to Facebook today. Massive, robust communities, but we have a problem in that lawyers are fairly fearful of communities, right? It comes from the bars, principally, where they talk about, hey, if you go out there and you advertise, that's a problem, right? If you go out there as lawyers and you're transparent, you're going to screw it up. There's a tremendous fear of community, and then we layer on top of that a fear of community, uh, excuse me, of technology. And this really started with movies like The Net, the idea that if you put your personal information out on the web, foreign terrorists would come and take it and try to kill you. Okay, and you marry those two ideas together and you have lawyers who are going, oh my God, this web thing, I'm just going to stick my head in the sand until it all blows over. I call this the ostrich approach. But the reality is that you can't just say, I have a word of mouth practice, I really do everything offline and I don't like this web stuff because the more important you are to the circle of commerce, you might not be selling bread or sheep or fish or whatever it may be, but if you're important to commerce, you're going to get sucked in to the informational web where people want to know about you and your practice and your partners and the services that you offer. You're important as lawyers. You're important to commerce. And that's why you see all of these brands that have popped up. They're communities where people are saying, come, come and interact with us. Tell us more about you. Let's have a conversation. And so many lawyers, because of this fear factor, again, this idea that we're going to get in trouble or there's this really complicated technology, we look at it as a very futuristic, fearful endeavor. But this is where the metaphor for back to the future comes in. The web doesn't take us to a future complex place. It actually takes us to a much simpler place. I mean, think about the days when we used to go to stores and we knew that shopkeeper, right? In our close-knit communities, you could go in and you would know the person that was selling you goods. You would understand his or her services. You'd know their kids, right? You had a very close association with that person and lawyers were no different, right? We would go out into our communities aggressively, be shaking hands. Every community that was important with us, I mean, remember the adage, uh, important to us. Remember the adage, uh, uh, marry a doctor or a lawyer? Marry a lawyer because they were fundamental pillars of our community, and we still are. But the problem is, there are all these communities that are evolving on the web, and we're not participating. You also, in our old communities, you could not only meet people, you know, there was this proximity in our small communities where you'd meet the proprietor or the lawyer, but you also had the neighbor right over the back fence in our small communities. And this exact same thing is happening online today, where people are asking, they're saying, this is a community that is fundamentally important to us. And if you are a lawyer that's relevant to that community, come to us, talk to us. And there might be a screen in between, but interact with our community. Join our conversation. Be part of us. Okay? Now, a lot of lawyers, again, with this fear factor, will think, ah, oh, this just sucks, right? I just don't have time for this. But you've got to look at it as the opportunity that it is. Here are eight, eight things that you should be focusing on. And if you'd like to talk about it more, uh, I'm always willing to be contacted to talk about all these different elements that I feel lawyers should be getting involved in as far as getting involved in communities and engaging in things like online marketing. First, set objectives. Business people set objectives, right? Know what success looks like. I see so many lawyers that just hire a consultant and throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and hope that it sticks. No, set objectives. And one of the big objectives you need to set is identify your target audience. Know who you're trying to talk to. Just as an example, I see all sorts of consumer lawyers that blog, but they put together a blog that's so full of legalese that not even lawyers like to read it, okay? Number two, identify your target time. Going out in any channel, getting involved in any community, uh, in using any social tool, they all have different amounts of time investment, right? So blogging, that takes quite a bit of time, but maybe answering questions on a website or uh, having a Facebook page or whatever you're going to do out there, it has different amounts of time that you need to invest. But whatever you do, 
Establish a core web presence, okay? This is your calling card on the web. This is where you're going to spend the majority of your time and money. It's the best foot forward that you can put out there, right? And you want this core so that when you go out to these communities, when you go out to the social networks and you join a LinkedIn group or you go tweeting or you're following people or have a Facebook group or whatever it may be, and you're being a responsible, interesting member of these groups, you can ultimately push them back to your core, right? So you want to be able to work the social networks in a way that gets them back to that calling card on the web. Number six, you want to stand out. Okay, I see so many lawyers who are getting involved in marketing, and they're just reporting. You're not reporting, you're commentating, right? Lawyers take positions when they're in the courtroom, when they're in law school and everything else, but somehow when they get into social media, they freak out. And they're just like, I just, I'm just going to report this. Don't do that. Number seven, monitor and measure. We talked about those goals in number one. You need to know if you're succeeding in those goals. And you also need to monitor what people are saying about you. So TweetDeck and Hootsuite, great tools, free tools for monitoring what's being said about you in social media, all sorts of free Google tools to monitor what's going on out in the web. And then finally, in closing with possibly the most important point, in the same way that we went from offline to online, we are going from online to mobile. If you don't understand mobile and how it's relevant to your practice, you're failing. Thank you.